Now, I don't know about you, but I don't even begin to function properly until I've paid a visit to my local watering hole. Coffee here in Melbourne is everything. So, inspired by my morning pick-me-up, I thought we'd have a crack at modeling a takeaway coffee cup inside of Cinema 4D. This is gonna be really simple to create and perfect for branding mock-ups. When presenting branding concepts, it's always nice to see how it's gonna be applied to real-world collateral. Perhaps you're creating an identity for a new cafe or a motion graphics piece promoting a new roast. Whatever the case, this little bad boy is gonna make things so much more simple. Let's see how it comes together. Hey guys, so today we're gonna to have a crack at making a takeaway coffee cup inside Cinema 4D. Now grab yourself a reference, I just went down to my, my local spot, asked for a, a clean cup so I could pull it apart and really see how it comes together, and they had no issue with that. So uh, do that yourself guys, or even just jump online and grab some photo reference before you make a start. All right, let's jump into our front view. We're just gonna build this up using splines from within Cinema 4D. So let's grab ourselves a circle spline, We'll just scale that down a little bit and this is gonna be our base. This is gonna be our start point of where our cup's gonna start from. Let's just copy that spline we've already got and we're just gonna pull it up. Now, looking at my reference, I'm just trying to see how tall is this can? This is gonna be the top point of our can. You can see I'm just hitting Alt-D and that's removing and that's removing my axis marker just so I can see, see more clearly where the top of our cup is gonna be. I'm just gonna scale that circle out a little bit. You know, in, in your reference, you can see it gets, it gets bigger as we get, as we get to the top. Yeah, now that's looking nice. You can see we've got a bit of angle between between the top spine and our bottom spine there. Now to model our cup today, we're gonna to be using one of my favorite tools, the loft. So let's grab both those spines, drop it into the loft, and you can see how this works. It just connects those spines and creates this beautiful even geometry between them. Now this is looking quite nice. You can see we've got the basis of our cup together. Now, if you take the lid off your cup, or if you if you can find a reference shot without a, without the lid on, you can see we've got a bit of a lip on the cup itself. So first off, I'm going to remove our start cap, so we have a so we have a hole at the top of our cup here, and I'm just going to copy that top spine, and I'm just going to scale this out a bit. This is going to start to form that little bit of a lip for us. Copy that again, and now I'm just going to simply pull this down. And by keeping this precise order in our hierarchy, you can see we go up to the top and then come back down to create that nice little lip on there. It's gonna pull that up a little bit. Yeah, that's looking nice. Now, if you look at your cup, you can see underneath, we get this indentation. It's not a flat surface. So I'm just gonna turn off our end cap for a second, just so you can see what we're gonna be doing here. Let's grab our very bottom spine and we're gonna, we're gonna duplicate that and we're gonna put that at the bottom of our hierarchy. Now this is now our start point. Let's just scale that down a little bit just so it's a little bit smaller than our previous one. So let's grab that bottom spline, scale it down a little bit and now by pulling that up and turning our caps back on, you can see with that now being our new start point, we get this nice little indentation at the bottom of our cup. And that's looking good, there, there we go. Just with a few simple splines, we've now created the base and that's looking quite nice. Now the next thing we need to dive in and have a look at is our lid. So we're gonna build this using a few of those splines that we've already set with our cup. Let's, so let's grab those top three and we're gonna drop them into a new loft. And this, and this is gonna form our lid. Let's turn our end cap off because we won't need that. But what we will need to do now change the order of the hierarchy that we've got these splines in. So you can see our top spline here, if I scale it out a bit, that's actually now our base. So let's just change our order here. Now let's grab both our top splines and we're just gonna move them up a little bit. And now with our bottom spline, we're just gonna scale this out. Now on my reference lid, it, it fans out a little bit after it connects to the top of the cup. So we're just gonna scale that out to get that, to get that fan out look. All right, let's copy that top spline, scale it down a bit, and we're just gonna pull this straight up. I'm just gonna pull this straight up, and this is gonna form the, the bulk of our lid. 
And once we've pulled this up, we're just gonna angle it ever so slightly. You can see all I'm doing is about five degrees here, just so we can get that bigger lip point, just like you can see in the reference shot. Nice, this is looking good. This is a good base, but what we need now is to create that, to create that rim edge on the inside of your cup. So now to create that, I'm just gonna duplicate our top spline. I'm just gonna scale it down a bit, and this is gonna start to form our indentation. You can see we're bubbling out a little bit on our geometry and this is easy to fix. We'll just dive into our loft, come over to the object tab. And if we just turn on linear interpolation, this will create smoother geometry for us to work with. And while we're working away, we can still add additional splines into this hierarchy. You see, I'm just wanting to tidy up our fan a little bit. As I'm building this, I can see that I can see it's not looking quite right. And it's nice to be able to come in and still make those adjustments on the fly. Nice, that's looking good. All right, let's grab our top spline that we've already scaled down. I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm just, but on this one, I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna remove that angle that we initially gave it. And by doing that, I can just pull it down. We've now formed that start of our indentation. I'll just grab both those top splines, scale it out a little bit, and just pull it away from where, from where our mouthpiece is gonna be. Scaled up a little bit more just so it's not quite as thick. Yeah, that's looking good. Nice, this is, this is starting to come together quite nicely. Now the only last thing we need to look at now, we just need to look at putting the hole in from where we're actually gonna drink from. So to do this, I'm gonna use a ball, throw in our lid, and I'm just gonna, I think what we'll use for this, we're gonna use a cube, but we're just gonna fill it. And by filleting it, that's gonna give us our nice smooth edges. You could use a capsule that's already got this built in, but sometimes you can get some funky interception when you try and use this technique. So I just find a cube works quite nicely for this. So we're just gonna pull this towards our lip end. Just scale it out a little bit. It's gonna give us a little bit more height. You can see we've actually gone to the wrong side, so let's just pull this back. Let's just pull this back to where we need it to correct that hole inside of our lid. Now if we pop that inside this hierarchy, but underneath our lid, it creates a nice little hole right in the top of our lid there for us. And I think that's looking, that's looking quite nice. Look at that, that was so easy. We did that in a couple of quick steps and this is gonna be great. We can throw a logo on that and look, we're flying around it in this scene. It's, it's coming together quite nicely. Low poly, look at that, perfect. So I hope you guys had fun making that, bringing that together. That's come together nice and quick, nice and easy. Hope you guys can take something away from, hope that was a bit of fun for you and I'll see you next time. All right, thanks guys.